2017 was fucking wild when it came to games. I don't know what was going on, but they had to cement their brand into everybody's mind. We had Final Fantasy 12. We had Final Fantasy 9. We had Final Fantasy 15 almost getting its shit together. That'll never be the case. We had Final Fantasy 15 blending into our Tekken. We had SNK blending into our Tekken. We had Street Fighter blending into our Tekken. We had Tekken 7 in general. I never thought the game would come. It's like the Final Fantasy 15 of fighting games. You just keep waiting and it never got there. But whatever, it happened. And when it did, it was, oh, so good. Minus the disappointment aspect, but we'll get to that later. Look, 2017 is probably my favorite year in a long time because it's the first year in games where I can say that I just couldn't keep up if I tried. If I were to invest all of my money and all of my time into the, all the games that I... I missed Divinity Original Sin 2. I really want to get that. You know, I missed Horizon Zero Dawn. And I really feel like I missed out on that because I was afraid that since it was an open world game, I wouldn't get into it. But, I mean, it's just reviewing too well for me not to. It's nominated for Game of the Year. Uh, it's standing alongside Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. Uh, hate, I really hate the fact that Nintendo's got two slots because they're pretty much guaranteed a uh, Game of the Year. Uh, just uh, they they really they dropped their load really hard this uh, in this last few months. The Switch was probably the biggest selling console that they've had in a while. Well, it is. It's already outsold the Wii U, and it's only been out for a couple of months. It is an amazing little device, and I love it for everything that it is. I hate myself for saying that, but that's just where we're at. Either way, I thought that I would take the time out of my day to tell you all the shit I bought. All the things that I wanted to look at in games. And um, moreover, get this out of the way now. If somebody comes up to me and says that loot boxes are the devil one more goddamn time, I'm going to slit their throat. Because yes, I'm in complete agreement. but between watching Downward Thrust, The No, The Easy Allies Podcast, Jim Sterling in general, and a whole bunch of other... Young, yeah, everybody's getting their little piece of the microtransactions pie to the point where now it's like, dude, I know what you're doing. You just ain't got anything to talk about today. Let it go. Uh, I, ben Moore had an outstanding discussion about it on Frame Trap, and it's like a three and a half hour podcast, so if you got the time, watch it. If you don't, fuck it. But um, he talks about it for quite some time, and it was a really great discussion. And then the discussion deteriorated in the Easy Allies podcast, and it deteriorated again into the next week, and it just gradually got worse. I'm tired of hearing about it. Don't get me wrong. We, we saw it in like three big games. We saw it in Need for Speed. We saw it in, in Battlefront 2, of course. We saw it in Shadow of Mordor, War, whatever. I've never been into those games, and I probably never will. But there are a lot of different games that got to see the loot box treatment. And then you got a whole bunch of different people saying, it's gambling. And it's like, okay, it is, but just just stop. Moving on, these are the games that I thought were the most important to talk about this year. These are the games that I went out and I picked up, not including the fact that I picked up Resident Evil 3 for the PlayStation 1, uh, like the physical copy of it, um, Final Fantasy 8, Final Fantasy 9. There was a couple things that I picked up that I won't be able to, you know, really discuss because I have no way of recording so uh, any kind of capture for the PlayStation 1, and it's not going to happen anyway. I wouldn't do that. But enjoy the video. Uh, be sure to do your things. Do the things. You know the things that they say at the end of every video? You know the people who have made it already? Not me? Do those things. We're going to jump into it right now. Fast and loose, that's how we're doing it. When it comes down to it, 2017 was one of my favorite years for games in recent memory. Every time a game came out, I was excited to at least hear about it. Horizon Zero Dawn kind of slipped under my radar. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild can eat my ass. But we're moving on from there, and we're jumping straight into January 24th, and that'd be Yakuza 0. Yakuza 0 was definitely one of my favorite beat-em-ups of the year. It felt really good to play as Kazuma Kiryu again, to rejoin that legacy of those really great games that nobody played because they're Japanese and you have to read subtitles, and Americans are goddamn lazy motherfuckers. Anyway, Yakuza 0 had a really, really good story. I really liked watching Goro Majima's Descent into Madness. Definitely better than watching Big Boss's Descent into Madness in Metal Gear Solid 5. God damn it, Metal Gear Solid 5. Still gonna be a disappointment to me two years, even three years later. They played us like a damn fiddle! 
but Yakuza 0 was really, really fun. I liked hanging out with Walking Erection, also known as Mr. Libido, also known as that naked dude that dances in the corner for no reason. And I liked watching porn in small booths and just doing that. Just, just cause. Sure, it's accessible on my phone, but it's way more funny watching Kazuma Kiryu get up, put the paper towels and napkins in the trash, and kind of being embarrassed with himself. Moving on from Yakuza 0, February 7th, you had Nier Automata, my sleeper hit of the year. Nier Automata was fucking awesome. Like, I loved everything about Nier Automata, and I didn't know I was going to love Nier Automata because I heard that Nier, the first one, was absolute garbage. Thank you, Ben Yahtzee Krata, or however you fucking say his name, for completely ruining that franchise for me by saying that everything involved in the series is absolute garbage and that you should never play Nier. With that said, Nier Automata looked great. 2B is Bay, 9S plays like garbage, and that other chick's name, whose name I forgot because I haven't even really gotten to that point yet, she's also really cool from what I've seen. I've seen footage of it, I haven't actually played that far yet. With that said, greatest music of the year. Soundtrack of the year, hands down. No matter what anybody says, if Mario Odyssey gets it, I swear to God I'm gonna be fucking pissed because Nier Automata had great music, it looked really good, it felt really good, it was great riding a boar for no reason or a moose, it was really fun upgrading that little robot ninja teacher so that he could fuck you up and that you could fuck him up, it felt good. The whole game felt so good, the joy of movement, this best guy ever said. It just, it's just so good. It's so good and not enough people played it. I have one friend that picked it up, you know, shout outs to Rodriguez. Great job, Rodriguez, for being the only person with common sense. He picked up Horizon Zero Dawn and Near Automata. Good job. Good job, Rodriguez. Moving on, April 4th, Persona 5, also known as Bay Simulator 5. This game had some of the coolest characters, some of the most anime feels to it. It made you feel great. It was super peppy. The intro music was great. I loved Persona 5. You know what I didn't like about Persona 5? That I was looking cool, Joker. Ooh, looking cool, Joker. Ooh, Ooh, looking cool, looking cool Joker. Joker. Ooh, Ooh, looking, looking cool, cool Joker. 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 That it was my last surprise and that I'd never see it coming and that I will reveal your true form. Holy shit, who decided to put lyrics in the generic fight theme? Who decided that it would be a good idea to have very consistent, repeated lines for the same actions over and over and over and over and over again? Makoto is best girl on your team. Takemi is definitely best girl outside of your team. No arguments. I don't want to hear it. Hash it out in the comments. I don't fucking care. My opinion will not change. Second place, definitely going to have to go to On. Third place, going to have to go to that future talent chick. Moving on. Boom. Tekken 7. Tekken 7, disappointment of the year. Loved it to death, loved it to pieces, loved everything I did in it. I loved Tekken 7. But goddamn, it was a disappointing. Everything that I wanted it in it just to be there, it just wasn't there. I wanted to be able to play Tekken Force again, because that shit was awesome. I wanted to be able to play some kind of tag mechanic, and I knew that was going to be there, because there's a tag game for that. I wanted to be able to play Team Battle, and that wasn't there. And for the love of God, bring back Tekken Ball. Don't give me Tekken Bull. Give me Tekken Ball. Tekken Ball was fun. You felt like you were still playing Tekken. What happened to that game? The music was okay. You got to play any music from any of the previous games, except Night, Winter, Night Sky, or whatever from, uh, from Tekken 2's intro, which was the best song from Tekken to me personally except for Ground Zero, Funk, and Moonlit Wilderness. Um, there's, a, there's some really good jams. The intro of the menu music is really good. The characters look fantastic. I like Tekken 7, but goddammit, where did the legacy characters go? Where did all of the options for go? Why doesn't the game feel like it's ever intended to be played locally with your friends? Like, it just feels like you should only be playing the game online, picking up rank against Eris, watching him body people with Dragunov, okay? Also, shout out to the fact that every other character in the game had the shittiest story mode ever. Why does Akuma matter more than any other legacy character? That's garbage and it needs to be fixed. Moving on. June 20th, Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. 
Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood hasn't been touched in my collection, that's why I don't have footage for it. Can't even access it yet, because I haven't finished Heavensward. I'm really regretful of that, but that's okay. I'm gonna get to it eventually. Moving on from Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood, because I have nothing to say about it. June 30th, Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy was... Biggest frustration game of the year. Made me want to rip my hair out. Wanted to rip my eyeballs out of the sockets, and maybe want to scream my head off because it was so goddamn hard. Why was the game so hard? Why did it change so much? What happened that made this game so difficult? I never beat Crash Bandicoot 1 when I was a kid because I never had it. And oh my god, I don't think I ever will because I just don't want to. I don't like losing that many lives. I don't like embarrassing myself. And god damn it, I do not like sitting through every time you start the game up watching Crash Bandicoot transition from Crash 1 to Crash 4 graphically because the company wanted to suck its own dick and say, look at what we did for you guys. It looks so much better. I don't care. The game looks good, but it's not good enough to be like, wow, this is the best thing ever. If anything, some things look awkward. Move it on. Final Fantasy XII came out on July 11th. July 11th will go down as a, as a passable day in the sense that I don't care, and July 11th is also the day that uh, Final Fantasy XII came out. I don't care for Final Fantasy XII. I picked it up out of curiosity. Maybe I liked it better than the last time I played it. But I hate Vaughn so much, and I hate Pinello so much, that it made it impossible for me to go back to that game and say, yeah, I'm going to dive headfirst into Ash's story, you know, with the Nethosite and all that stuff. The story is good, but Vaughn's involvement makes it really suck. I really don't like Vaughn. He is insufferable. Moving on. I don't want to talk about it anymore. August 15th at Sonic Mania. That's definitely going to get intro of the year, best intro music, best feel-good game of the year, because Sonic finally made a good fucking game, and it was a lot of fun. I didn't get any footage of it because that game is a little bit different. I'm not good at it, and I don't like embarrassing myself because the game's supposed to look like it's playing itself. And I am so bad at Sonic that I've spent 10 minutes in a stage and died because of it. I did beat it with Sonic, I did beat it with Tails, and I did beat it with Knuckles. I flew with Tails, I glided with Knuckles, I airdropped or whatever with Sonic, and I had a great time, but I did not get all the Chaos Emeralds, and I had a tough time beating it after getting through it with uh, Knuckles first, because I beat it with Knuckles first. Moving on from Sonic Mania, we're going right into Yakuza Kiwami, or Yakuza Extreme for the English-speaking audience. Yakuza Extreme, <laughs> that game is um, actually not extreme, it's pretty tame. Uh, it's Yakuza 1, with the addition of Majima Everywhere, a couple extra things that came from the previous game, some stances, and uh, the ability to get your legend mode a little bit easier. I didn't really like Yakuza Kiwami as like as much as I liked Yakuza 0 because it's stripped down, you can tell that this game was kind of rushed out so that you kind of got the feel for it. Yakuza Kiwami 2 is going to be way better, it's, it's operating on a PlayStation 4 only engine as opposed to a PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 engine, so it's going to look great, it's going to feel great, it's going to play great, and I hope it is as great as Yakuza 0 was. Yakuza Kiwami really liked that they added in the cutscenes about Nishiki and how he became a piece of shit because you need that. because. It's really unjustified how bad of a person he is by the end of Yakuza the first time around. Now that you have Yakuza Kiwami, at least you know that he kind of got fucked over and manipulated and ass-fucked a few times, and now he's kind of a dick. Moving on. Not trying to spoil the game. October, Friday the 13th, The Evil Within 2. Definitely one of my favorite games of the year, and I know I've talked a lot of high praise of a lot of different games, and I've bashed a few as well, but The Evil Within 2 felt good to play. It looked good to play, it was just fun watching Sebastian walk up to a picture frame with a knife and say, I'm gonna stab the shit out of you. Or the other best thing that he says in the game, what the? He says what the probably about eight times in the first hour of the game. It's so good. And being that he's already experienced the STEM system in The Evil Within 1, you would think he'd be used to this kind of weirdness, but he's not. Either way, The Evil Within 2 had one of the coolest ending songs, had the best uh, OST stuff when it came to um, making your way home. I think that's my favorite song of the year because it just it conveys a very special emotion in the last moments of the game. End of the game was kind of weak, 
but the build up up to it and the open world elements really made up for it. Good job Bethesda, I completely forgot you were involved in this game because seriously, I've never liked Bethesda as a company. They surprised me this year though. This is the police came out on October 27th and I have no footage of that. With that said, I'm not going to get footage of that because it's kind of a bland game. It's uh, it's fun, but at the same time, it's boring. Like it's like it's it's an oxymoron because in the beginning you're like, oh, I like managing my people and all that, but then they just keep throwing shit at you and you're like, why is this game so fucking long? It could have been way shorter, and uh, I think I paid full retail value for it. I don't know why I would do that to myself. I should have just waited till it was on sale. But whatever, solid indie. Definitely not something I'd recommend to other people, but if you like management of things, then you should play Stardew Valley, which I also picked up on October 27th. Uh, I picked up This is the Police on October 27th, as well as Stardew Valley, as well as Super Mario Odyssey, as well as Mario Kart 8. And um, Stardew Valley was fantastic, and I have not come back to it because it's one of those things that's like, this is the only game you play now. And I don't want to do that to myself, I don't want to pigeonhole myself to farming. Uh, it's a great game. I really loved farming. Uh, I had, all I did was max out tools. That's that's how I spent all my time. I didn't hang out with people. I didn't start a relationship with anyone. I wanted my farm to grow as fast as humanly possible. And damn it, I achieved mediocrity. I got a big melon twice, and that's good enough for me. Stardew Valley. We're done with that. Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8 was a lot of fun because it was Mario Kart. That's all I got to say about Mario Kart. Super Mario Odyssey, on the other hand, is a fucking masterpiece, and I hate myself for having to say it. The Nintendo people have done it again, where they've introduced me to a nice steak dinner, and then when I get home, they domestically abuse me. It happens every fucking time. They go, we're going to put out the Wii, we're going to give you some of the good stuff, you're going to like it for a while, and then we're going to give you shovelware. Hopefully, that doesn't happen when it comes to the rest of the Switch. But Mario Odyssey is the strongest game in the library thus far. I haven't played Xenoblades 2 yet. I haven't picked it up. I want to get it. But I just, I don't have the money to keep throwing out money for games. It's a lot of games. It's a lot of games. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Mario Odyssey was the best feeling mechanically game of the year. It was the most enjoyable game. Like, dying had no consequence. Doing hat combos was lit as fuck. The music was really enjoyable. It wasn't it wasn't painful. It was just fun. It was not worth uh, soundtrack of the year though. Don't be mistaken there. But it was super fun to listen to. I loved Super Mario Odyssey. I loved being able to take a shit and just do hat jumps and do these sick ass parkour stunts. Parkour. New Dog City is very special. Okay, <laughs> let me just throw that out there. The moped jumping off the top of that building, the game making you feel clever for landing it on top of one building like you're a badass, only to realize that there's a fucking moon there for parking. Oh my god, it felt so good parking that moped there. You thought you were clever, they were like, no, we know how you'd have fun, this is how you have fun. And they let you have fun that whole game. Nothing is mandatory, everything is sacred. Mario, favorite fun game of the year. Serious game though, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus rolled out, and I, uh, that actually came out a while ago for me, but I didn't play it, and the only reason I haven't played it yet is because I kind of got it out of order. I actually picked it up last week, and I haven't had an opportunity to touch it because I've been busy with so many other things. With that said, there's a couple more things that I did play. Uh, so Wolfenstein, I don't know yet, but I hear it's really good. I'm looking forward to the black chick doing black chick stuff and Blaskowitz being a badass. But, DLC that I picked up that was worth the full value of a game, Street Fighter V and Dark Souls 3. Street Fighter V had some really solid introductions of characters. Street Fighter V has the best model for releasing characters because they actually fucking do it, Tekken 7. Why did you put out Noctis? Geese Howard? Who plays, who plays SNK? Who plays Final Fight? Fucking no one, don't lie to me. Moving on. Street Fighter V was fantastic. I like Street Fighter V. I said that when it came out. I love Street Fighter V. I just wish it didn't have such a fucking shit release. With that said, every character they put out, I enjoy playing. I enjoy the costumes. I enjoy that they finally implemented a story mode, and goddammit, I'm gonna enjoy Street Fighter for some time to come. Last but not least, Dark Souls 3. 
we bid adieu to you with the Ring City. The Ring City came out at the beginning of the year sometime, and I played the shit out of it. Uh, I still haven't beat Medir. <laughs> like, I just haven't done it because I just wasn't specced properly for it. He beat the dog shit out of me. He beat me like I stole something. He beat me like a Hebrew slave. He beat me as if I came to the world, told everybody that I was your lord and savior. Nobody believed me. And then they put a crown on my ass and they made me carry across a very large distance and crucified me. That's how bad that dragon beat my ass. If you'd like, you, you can watch. It's there. Um, Dark Souls 3 had a really solid goodbye. I really like Slave Knight Gale. Gale is the last fight. He was really difficult. He was hard to play against. And, uh, you know, I ended up smashing my first try. But he was definitely a hard fight. Uh, whereas Madeir can't beat, can't beat him. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just don't. I just don't want to do it. What the hell happened to 2017? What happened? What were you doing, 2017? What, were you just holding out this whole fucking time? I know Horizon's great. I've heard good things from people whose opinions I respect. You were doing a good thing, 2017. I hope 2018 can do the same thing, because if it doesn't, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Games that snuck past me this year, you know, Horizon did. Breath of the Wild always will. Resident Evil 7. I didn't play it. Xenogears is probably going to pass right by me, or Xenoblade. All these games, just, they look... The new Dot Hack remaster, I want to pick that up. One of my friends is playing it, like, right now. I see him on PSN, and he's playing it. I want to get those games. But 2017 did something that I haven't had happen to me in some time. It has put out so many quality games back-to-back -back that I could not even think to try to afford them all. Such a good series of games. So much fun to look at. So many different things to put on my PS4. I got a Super Nintendo Classic. I didn't wait in line for it. I just went to GameStop and got it when they had a stack of 20 of them in there. Oh my god, 2017. You know what? It, if, you, if you just hopped on top of me and mounted me, I'm going to let you thrust. I'm going to take it from you, 2017. Good job. This is my year in review for when it comes to video games. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in to Ham Hub. And uh, if you got any questions, be sure to hit it up in the comments. If you think I missed a game that you wanted me to talk about, recommend it. I might go get it. Maybe. If Christmas doesn't murder me first. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And be sure to subscribe to Ham Hub.